Hello and welcome to today's class. Today we'll be taking up the OPAC 2021 prelims paper. As you have, as you all know that in the 16th October 2022, the OPAC prelims examination was actually conducted. But there has been a slight change in that. The question pattern and the paper pattern is completely a change. What I can say is that the paper is a bit difficult right now. So most of you have already witnessed this. But OPSC has a hidden message within its prelims paper. And the message is that it's going to shift to UPSC pattern. From the next year onwards, as you already know that OPSC has already given its notification. In its notification, it has completely mentioned that it will be in lines with the UPSC pattern. So let us not take it out of our mind that this time's OPSC paper is nothing but a message from the OPSC that from the next time onwards, the paper might be tougher and will be in line with the UPSC paper. So basically, what we need to do is that we need to understand certain subject. We need to understand the core of the subject so that we can actually remember the factual data. Today, while explaining the total question paper, we will basically focus upon those particular points. So let's begin with it. So, the objective of today's discussion will be analysis of the changing pattern of the OPAC paper, second, the difficulty level of the question paper, and last but not the least, what shall be the cutoff? See, this was the first question. With reference to the CHOGM, that is the Commonwealth Head of the Organization, the Foreign Minister's Preliminary 2022, consider the following statement. The first says that ki, the foreign minister preliminary was held in Jamaica. This is the option one. And then we have the option two, which says that the theme of the plenary is democracy, peace and governance. The third was it was attended by S. Jayashankar from India. And the fourth option is the meeting is held every year. Now, let us see if we can answer this question without knowing much about it. But since since this is more a factual based question, we need to have certain idea so as to answer the question. See, from the first point, this particular option is wrong. It was not held in Jamaica, rather it was held in Rwanda, Africa. Now the theme of, see, from the first option, since it's wrong, so we can easily eliminate option number one of, or the option A. The theme of the plenary was this democracy, peace and governance. Option two is the right option. So you can see that option B and option D both have the second options. Next, the third, it was attended by Dr. S. Jayashank from India. He may have attended, he may not have attended, I'm not sure, but look into this. Number fourth option, the meeting is held every year. Now, this is again a very wrong statement. The meeting is not held every year. So, with this, we can easily eliminate option B and option C. Hence, the answer would be option D. Please look into this. Now, why did OPAC ask this particular question? That is important. See, this particular meeting was delayed for two years. And that was the very reason that it came into the news because 2020 and 2021 were the periods of COVID. Let's come to the next question. Which two of the following statements are not correct? First, it's with the NIA. The National Investigation Agency is the primary counter-terrorism task force in India. Okay, next option is that it was established in November 30, 2006. Now over here, there is a problem, sir. Now when it comes to date, we basically are very bad in remember remembering the dates. Even I don't remember dates. But then, we need to understand that why the NIA was established. Now the NIA was established following the 26-11 attack. The 26-11 attack took place in the November 2008. And in the same year itself, the government reacted and the government established the National Investigating Agency. So, with this, let's solve the question. The first question is the first uh, option. I think it's a very common thing and that we can say that it's a correct. But the second option is a very wrong option because it's a November 30, 2008. So, basically, if we understand why the NIA was established, then only we can remember the particular date, else it's difficult to remember. Third, it does take permission from the respective states to investigate. We do not know. It may or it may not. Now look, see, 
when I say that question option 2 is wrong, so easily we can eliminate certain option. So I have eliminated option A that is 2 and 3. Now it does take permission from the respective state to investigate and last but not it has its branches in both Lucknow and Kolkata. See it does has its branches in Lucknow and Kolkata and that it does takes the permission from the states. The option answer would be the answer A. See that is it's both 2 and th sorry it's both 2 that is it's both 2 and 3 would be the right answer. So, next. It is the third question. It is with respect to the which of the following statements are correct in respect to the India's GSAT 24 satellite program. Now see, this question over here is that the answer of this question lies in the question itself. Now we need to recognize this very properly. See, the first option it says it is a 24 KU band communication satellite. Okay, it may be, may not be. It was launched from the Kourou Space Center in the French Guiana. And third point, it says this will provide coverage to the Pan India. Okay, since it's a GSAT satellite, it's basically a communication satellite. Our basic understanding is that yes, it will provide a Pan India communication network. So basically from this, I'll say that option three is correct. Now look at option four. It is launched by the ISRO's powerful rocket GSLV Mark II. Over here, we need to analyze these two options. That is option number two and option number four. If you analyze that, you see that ISRO is not going to import its rocket to France right now. So obviously, if it was launched from the France, so obviously it was launched from the French rocket and not from the ISRO's rocket. If option two is right, then option four will be wrong. And if option four is right, then option two will be wrong. But basically, you can see is that it says that key, the Kourou Space Center in the French Guiana was the actual place from which the satellite was launched. Option 4 is a wrong option. So just by eliminating option 4, I can easily eliminate option A, C and D. Hence, the right option is your option B. Let's look into this analysis. See, so why was this question asked? See, the question was asked because this was the first time that a GSAT 24 satellite was launched based on the demand. It was demanded and a private player Tata Play for which this GSAT 24 satellite was launched. And that is the very reason that OPC picked up this question. This is the first time that India has become a major player in the space sector and that private players are slowly and slowly coming into this sector. Now let's come to the question number four. The SEBI has set up an advisor committee on the ad hybrid securities. In respect of the hybrid securities, which of the following statement is are correct? Number one, the hybrid securities are securities that have combination of debt and equity character. See, the name itself is hybrid. So obviously a security would be a combination of two or more elements. So it might be the option one may be right, may not be right. Now number two, common stock was the first type of the hybrid security. We need to analyze this and number three, the holder of the common stock receives dividend before the holder of the preferred stock. Now look into this. I found something in the third statement. In the third statement, I can say that key. basic knowledge say that preferred. Preferred means importance, means the first. The first person is to be given priority rather than the common. So over here by reading the statement itself, I can say that key. somewhat option three does not feels like a right statement because it says that key, the common stock uh, that the holder of the common stock will receive dividend before the holder of the preferred stock. If we simply understand the meaning of the common and preferred general English language, then we can decipher that the option three is a wrong option. In that context, I would say I would eliminate this option. Then it comes to option A and option C. If I say option A and C, what I got is that key option 4 is the right option because in this two, 4 option is the right. Now let us look into the option 2. Option 2 says that key common stock was the first type of the hybrid security. Now with this again what happens is that common stock was not the first type of the hybrid security. 
hybrid uh, security rather it was the preferred stock which was the first type of the hybrid security let's look into the solution and then we'll bring up the answer see it was the convertible bond i'm sorry it was the convertible bond it was the convertible bond which was the was the first type of the common type of the most common type of the hybrid security is nothing but your convertible bond right and that the hybrid security is nothing but it includes both the debt and the equity portion within it now they are bought and sold at the brokerage this is one of the important points that we need to remember now rates and invits are classified as the hybrid security this has recently been promoted by the government so basically with this what we understand is that we need to have a common knowledge of the hybrid security to understand this question but we saw that ki with the basic understanding of the difference between the common and prefer stock we can simply decipher that option 3 is the wrong option and that we have a 50 50 chance to either click its option its option either its option a or its option c let's move on to the next question c which of the following statements are not correct in respect of the one nation one ration card c one nation one ration card very easy to understand that for the entire india we have one ration card ration card for the people below the poverty line this is our basic understanding any knowledge of this particular topic let us see if we can decipher this question simply by understanding the language the number one it says that the scheme has become operational in the entire india yes it may be it may not be but let's see option 2 assam became the 34th state to adopt the onorc again we do not know it may be it may not be look into the option number 3 this move has made food security portability now this is something that we need to know yes one nation one ration card if we understood this then we understood that option number 3 is a very right option so i would say that option number 3 is a right option now number 4 number 4 it says that ki ration card are nationalized using the voter identity card cd see very well we know that since the implementation of the aadhar most of our ids have been converged with the aadhar and aadhar has become the basic id that on which most of our datas have become merged even if we are obtaining a mobile sim we need aadhar and nothing can happen without the aadhar so obviously from this i would say that ki option 4 is a wrong option so by saying this i can easily eliminate option c and i will easily only eliminate option a next i see that option 3 is a right option and i see over here that there is only one option with option 3 so basically in this way i can solve the question but still then let's analyze this now the onorc or the one nation one ration card is being implemented under the national food security act and that the system allows the national food security beneficiaries that are migrant laborers that a migrant labor even from bihar when he goes to delhi he can obtain the ration from both bihar from the delhi itself and the remaining ration that he has not obtained can be obtained by his family members in bihar so that was the basic concept of the one nation one ration card and with respect to whether assam is the 34 state or not assam is actually the 36 state slash ut to implement this let's go to the next question according to the asia global startup ecosystem report released on june 14 2022 which indian state ranks the first position in asia see this is a simple question and it's a simple answer it's option d that the global econo- that is your kerala sorry we just skip the question it's kerala it's the kerala that was ranked as the Asia's global startup ecosystem um, that it's one of the that it was the first indian state that the it is the indian state which has uh, which has come up with the first position in this asia global startup ecosystem this is a basic factual question so we need to understand this and we need to retain this in our mind if we want to answer this question we cannot go for guess in this kind of a question next in respect of the brics 22 summit held in the virtual mode which of the following statements are correct see 
this was one of the most dicey question that OPC gave. Now this question, either we could analyze it properly and then answer it or basic thing is that we should leave this question. But if we go by analysis, we are sure that we can answer this question. So let us analyze this question. The meeting of the topic is to foster high quality of BRICS partnership, usher a new era of global development. Now when I am reading the statement without knowing, this is a basic general statement and this is a right statement. We cannot, we cannot at no point say that this will be a wrong statement. Look at number two. Vladimir Putin said that Russia is ready to promote close and versatile interaction with the BRICS partner. Again, a generalized statement, but whether Russian President Vladimir Putin said this or did not say this, we do not know. But from this, I can get that option one is the right option because it's a general statement. Number three, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said, Members should understand security concerns of each other and provide mutual support. Again, a very, very general statement. No complicated statement. But look into question no, the option number four. It says, Chinese President Xi Jinping welcomed the expanding military ties among the BRICS. This is an important thing. We know that India has been constantly in clash with China with respect to the, at the northern frontiers. We had the Galwan clash and recent clashes are still going on. And right with respect to that, Russia is already in war with Ukraine. Now, at no point the Chinese President Xi will welcome such expanding military ties among the BRICS nation and all. Though BRICS nation have their common relationship with Russia, but such kind of a statement is easily capturable that this statement is not a right statement. So with this, I can eliminate option number four. When I'm eliminating option number four, I'm actually eliminating option number B, option number C and option number D and I'm directly straight getting into the answer option number A. So this such kind of a question is completely based on analysis part and this is a logic based question and solution lies in analysis. We cannot go and read details into the BRICS 22 summit who said what and who has been done what. Such kind of question is out of the context this question is based completely on analysis. And with this question, OPEC has given a straight message that we are going to the UPC pattern. And this is nothing but the UPC style of question. Okay, it's the question number eight. With respect to X Khan Quest 2022, which of the following statement are correct? It's a multinational peace exercise. It was conducted from March 6 to March 2022. It was held at Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. India's contingent was represented by the personals of Kashmiri scout. Now, again, with respect to this question, OPSC somewhat is giving the answer over here. If you analyze the fourth point, let's leave first, second and third point. Just look into the fourth point, Kashmir scouts. We have never heard of the Kashmir scouts. And that is a thing. So basically, so option number four, we can easily eliminate. But despite of eliminating option number four, option A, C, D and remains. So basic knowledge of this thing needs to be there if we want to attempt this question. Without the basic knowledge, no one should attempt this question. Hence, let's look into the analysis part. So option A was the right option that it's a multinational peace exercise which was held in Mongolia. And, Indian and the Indian army was represented by none other than your Ladakh scouts. So what the, op the option would be your option C would be your right option. Sorry. So option C is your right option. That is option number one and option number three are right. And when it was conducted from March 6 to March 20, 2022, this particular option is very difficult to decipher. Even with the logical analysis, this is very difficult to decipher whether it was held on this particular days or not. So again, in terms of difficulty, I would say that this question was made difficult by actually adding up this factual data by OPAC. Let's look into the question number nine. The International Day of Yoga is observed on June 21st. Which of the following statements about the International Day of the Yoga are not correct? See, it's saying not correct rather than correct. So first of all, we need to observe which of the following statements are correct. The observation of the International Day of the Yoga was started from the year 2016. No, it was not started from the year 2016, but itself when Prime Minister Narendra Modi came in 2014, he himself promoted yoga and himself gave the speech in the United Nation. And it was from the 2015 itself that the observation of the International Day of the Yoga was started. Second, the idea to have a UN mandate day 
for celebrating yoga was put forward by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Obviously, during the explanation of the first statement itself, I had said that. Look into number three. This day was incepted in the UNGA in 2015. If you look into this and number one, you can easily decipher that one either three is wrong. And number four, June 21st was selected as the yoga day because it is the longest day of the year in the southern hemisphere. Now, again, this or this portion is a wrong statement. Why? See, June 21st is summer solstice that occurs in northern hemisphere rather than in the uh, rather than in your southern hemisphere. So from this we got that key. option 4 is the wrong statement that we are looking into. And that again option 1 is again a wrong statement that we are looking into. So we got 1 and 4 are the wrong statements. So look into the option that is having 1 and 4. Option B and option C is having into the 1 and 4. Next. This day was incepted in the UNGA in 2015. So option 3 remains a right statement. But this I would say that key, the option would be your option D. Sorry, we missed the question. Sorry. Yes, that is option 1, 2 and option 3 are both the wrong statements. This number question number 9. The International Day of Yoga is observed on every June 2021. Which of the following statement about this International Day of the Yoga are not correct? See, first of all, you can see that majority of the statement over here is given are not correct. It says, first of all, is that key. The basic option over here is totally, I would say, a wrong option because look into this question. June 21st was selected as the yoga day because it is the longest day of the year in the northern hemisphere, in the southern hemisphere. But no, it's not the longest day in the southern hemisphere, it's the longest day in the northern hemisphere and that's because it's the summer solstice. So I would say that option 4 is a wrong option. So with this and then again option 1, it says that the observation of the international day of the yoga was started from the year 2016. Again, option 1 is a wrong option. So let us see, option 1 is the wrong option that we got and option 4 again is the wrong option we got. So we got 1 and 4 and we got 1 and 4. See, and that the idea to have a UN mandate day for celebration the yoga was put forward by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Now this was one of the right statement that Narendra Modi himself, he was the person who actually put forward this thing to have a international yoga day. So anything having option 2 will not be our option. So I'd go for option B, would be the right answer. So here the option would be on option B rather than option D. Next, an innovation project called Nippon. The Nippon is national initiative for promoting the skilling of the Nirman workers was launched in June 2022. So this is a recent question and relating to this, which of the following statement are correct? Now number one point, the initiative was launched for skill training of one lakh construction worker. Okay. It was. This is a simple. We can easily decipher this because it says that he skill training of the Nirman workers. Now, when I'm saying Nirman workers, they're nothing but your construction workers. So, to some extent, option one is correct. But one lakh construction again, I need to have that idea if I'm attempting this question. Without that knowledge, I'll not be attempting this question. Look at number two. It was launched under the flagship scheme of Prime Minister Employment Generation Program. No. This is a very wrong option. Option 2 is the wrong option because it was, it was launched under the Deen Dayal Upadhyay Yojana under the, by the Urban Ministry. So, with this, what I get is that option 2 is a wrong option and without wasting much of the time, I can easily eliminate option D, option C, option B. Hence, my right answer would be option A. Okay, it's with respect to Nippon. The na see, the Nippon is an initiative of the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs under its flagship scheme, the Deen Adayal Anti Yode Yojana National Urban Livelihood Mission, which aims to upskill 1 lakh of the workers, that is your, the, this Nirman workers. And that the National Skill Development Corporation, the nodal agency under the Ministry of the Skill Development and Entrepreneurship 
is the nodal agency for implementing it see two things you need to have this in this thing first of all this initiative was launched by ministry of housing and urban affairs but again the implementation of the scheme is done by the ministry of the skill development and entrepreneurship by the you know, that is the national skill development corporation now this thing we need to have in mind and these are the dicey questions that opc have started right now to focus it's not that a common scheme will come from a common ministry rather the schemes will come which in which diverse ministry have their stakes let's go on to the next question pick up the wrong matching with respect to the new chief justice of the high court appointed recently now this is a very factual based question we need to have idea with respect to that you have no idea leave it you have the idea attempt it it's simple that justice satish chandra justice justice satish chandra sharma was from the new delhi high court so obviously answer is your none other than your option c next question with pme vidya program it was launched by ministry of education in may 2020 so the question itself is giving us some hint which of the following major initiatives of the program are not correct the first it says disha one nation multi digital platform okay number 2 swam prabha tv channel one class one channel okay special e content for the visual and hearing impact now this important thing see i do not know whether option 1 or 2 is right but i can easily say that option 3 is right why you need to understand this see in every government scheme government has come up that it should actually be have some element which would be helping the physically disabled or physically challenged people so pme vidya program yes it would be having a special e content for the visual and hearing impaired person so option 3 is a right option and that you can see that that there is no the, there is no opinion double opinion with respect to that number 4 extensive partnership with parents association in school management see this question we need to have a thorough analysis else this is difficult to answer number one option it's disha no it's diksha not disha so i can easily say that ki option 1 is a wrong option so option 1 is a wrong option with that i am eliminating option a and option d now what is the right option i got i got option 3 as the right option now swam prabha tv channel is also the right option so over here what i got is that option 2 and option 3 is the right see this is important how i can eliminate this option read this option extensive partnership with parents association in school management now this is somewhat is a vague statement parents association means uh, the something that uh, we are having a tv satellite tv channel and there will be association with the parents management committee and all this is something that's an absurd statement that has been given so option 4 can easily be eliminated out this is the e vidya portal it will enable digital online on air access to education will benefit more than 25 crores school going children diksha it's diksha not disha look into it it's diksha digital infrastructure for knowledge sharing and swam online courses for the mooks and special e content look into the last statement special e content for the visually and the hearing impact that is important see number 13 in which of the following districts uh, of the gujarat india's first ever girl panchayat called the balika panchayat was started is none other than option a that is in kutch gujarat it was started this is again a very factual question there is no logical understanding with respect to this you know this hit the question you don't know this leave it okay, okay. now the kusbul lake national park of mongolia has been added to the world network of the biosphere reserve by unesco in respect of of this which of the following statement are correct the decision was taken during the 36th session of the international coordination Com council of the mab that is man and biosphere program of the unesco next the program was held at paris in june 2022 the biosphere network was launched by unesco in 1971 the first biosphere reserve of the world was established in 1975 now this is a very highly factual question now this highly factual question you need to know something to answer that with this deciphering the question is become difficult this is completely has this question has been made difficult by adding factual data but anyways let us look into it 
The first biosphere reserve was established in 1975 is a wrong option. It was in 1979. So with this, you eliminate option D and option B. Next, the decision was taken during the 36th session of the International Coordination Committee. Again, option 1 is a wrong option. So the right option is option C. Option C is the right option. So basically with this, we'll add two more facts. We need to know the first five spare reserve was established in 1979. Largest biosphere reserve in India is none other than your Gulf of Kutch. And the smallest being the Dhibru Saikwaka in Assam. And the first biosphere reserve in India was none other than your Nilgiri biosphere reserve. Let's move on to the next question. The Reserve Bank of India released its vision of architecture of digital finance in a document payment system on July 17, 2022. In respect of which of the following statements is are not correct. Now, this is a very long question and this is a googly question that the OPSA has given to you. Now, if this question, first of all, is that do not be scared by this question. At least read this question if you want to know that. The, again, the answer of the question lies in the question itself. Look into number one. This is called the Payment Vision 2025 document. Maybe, may not be. This document includes big techs, fintechs in payment. Okay. It's about the architecture of digital finance. Yes, it could include the big techs and the fintechs. It's a basic and a general statement. Third, it includes introducing Bitcoin currency. Now, remember that RBI has been always against the Bitcoin currency, but it had its plan for its own type of the currency, but it was never in support of the Bitcoin. And look at question option number four. It delinks it delinks credit card from the with the UPI that is unified payment interface. Simple understanding of this question. Every day we are using Google Pay and G, uh, this phone pay and Google Pay. Now with this, what is happening is that most of you know that your Google Pay and phone pay are not linked with the credit card. So something which is not linked at all, why will the RBI go for linking them at all? So with this, I decipher that option question number four is a wrong option. And with that, I am eliminating option B and eliminating option D. Now I have two options, option A and option C. Option A says that it's a physical payment vision 2025 document. Yes, it is right. And option two that says that key, this document includes the big tech and the fintech payment. These two are very general statement. And I will go with this two statement only because there is no third statement to go with. Going with option three would nothing but a dangerous statement. So my option would be option A. Sorry. Sorry, it's option B. So the answer would be the option A, not option B. See, payment vision 2025 document includes regulation of the big techs and fintechs guidelines. See, linking credit card as well as credit card components with the bank, right? And introducing of the central bank digital currency. Next, match the person in the column with the name and the state, column 1 and column 2. Poti Sri Ramalu. Okay, Poti Sri Ramalu was easily, we can identify that he was from Andhra Pradesh. Master Tara Singh was from Punjab and Sibu Soren was from the Jharkhand. The first person who took up, now this question is an easy question. This is not such a difficult question. In the basic NCRTs, in the basic NCRTs of the political science, we can easily get it. And there's nothing to be analyzed about it. Simple fact-based question. The Henderson Brooks Bhagwat report, the Arun Nehru report respectively pertains to the identify the correct option. The Sino-India relation after independence and the reforms needed in the management of the Indian armed forces. Next, reforms needed in the India's foreign relationship and reforms in the central state relation. C, Indo-Pak relation and Indo-Sri Lanka relation. And option D, Sino-Indo engagement of 1962 and reforms needed in the management of the Indian armed forces. Now, with respect to this, option D is the right answer. But most of us got confused with option A and option D. Because the Henderson report was basically came after the aftermath of the 1962 war, which, which it said that what were the flaws in the Indian armed forces that led to the India's defeat in the Sino-Indo war of 1962. This is a simple thing. So option A is not the right option, rather option D is the right option that Sino-Indo, that the Sino-Indian engagement of 1962 and the reforms needed in the management of the Indian armed forces. This was the thing that it particular focuses, not on the Sino-Indian relations, Sino-Indian engagement. Now it has started to play with the words. Understanding the words will help us to decipher this question. Next on the question number 18, question number 18 again, it's a very straightforward question. 
we can easily identify Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee belonging to the Bharatiya Janasan and then I'm identifying Ram Manohar Loya belonging to the Congress Socialist Party. And Pilu Moody, even if I don't know, with option X and option Z, I can easily decipher that the answer is none but your option D. Next, the popular title used by Sheikh Muhammad Abdullah Erod Venkata Ramaswamy and Ballabhai Patel were respectively. Again, straightforward question, no need of understanding, but look into the question itself. In the last, it says that Ballabhai Patel, it's actually Sardar Ballabhai Patel. So with this, I will give that option A is the right option. Moving to the question number 20, the following princely states of India were known for the reformist policy. It says A, B, C and D. In this, option B would be the right option. But why? Let us understand this. See, it was the Maharaja Sairaj Gaikwad of Baroda. He was basically known for his educational reforms. This is number one. And then is the King Jaisama Devar of Tavankur. Now, King Jaisama Devar was Tavankur was quite famous for the upliftment of the untouchables. Even prior to the temple movement that happened during the, means it was during the 1930s, it was before that such a thing had taken place. So, with this, I would basically say that I would go with option, that is your option B. Next, Raja Ravi Burma and Raja Ramon Roy were respectively this is very easy question and an easy answer. Raja Ravi Burma was one of the founders of the Indian modern painting. And next, Raja Ramon Roy was one of the reformists, was the first reformist and one of the major reformists who worked for the emancipation of the women, of the upliftment of the lower caste, upliftment of the downtrodden against child marriage, for child education. So this is a direct and a straight question. The answer would be option C, an artist and author of Tawafut ul Muhavidin. Next, the Nehru Mahal Novice model was concerned with the planned growth of the Indian economy, development of the Indian culture, Indian education, Indian foreign policy. With this straightforward question, option B, C, D are wrong option and that you should hit on to the option A. The Nehru and Mahal Novice plan was basically industrial development of India. When the first plan focused on the agriculture, the second plan they said that okay, let us focus on the industrial development. And on that basis, the second five-year plan started with the planned development of India on the path towards the industrialization. Next, the Patola weep was the traditional done in the combination of, see, here two things you need to know. First, there is uh, the Patola weep is basically somewhere famous in Gujarat. So basically from this, you can see that ki, option one and option four and option five would be eliminated very easily. Look into option two and option three. In option 2 and option 3 is quite confusing because in one place we have Surat and in another place we have Ahmedabad but what is common is Patan. So how to eliminate and what should be right? Now if you have a basic knowledge then we would say that Surat is somewhat a place where the manufacturing of the saris go on. So with that I would go for option 2. So option 2 remains the right option and then with option 3 so the answer would be option 2 and option 3 that is Surat. Patan and Ahmedabad. These are the three fair regions where there is the manufacturing of the Patola weave undertaking place. Next, the Muslim League, this was the important question that Muslim League accepted the Lucknow Pact but rejected the Nehru report because, understanding sir, see, when the Lucknow Pact was signed between the, uh, with the Muslim League by the Indian National Congress, Indian National Congress at that time gave Muslim League, number one is that separate electorate. Number two is that majority of the seats, one third of the seats in the central provinces. Last but not the least, proportionally Muslim to be represented at a proportional Muslim would have a higher number of seats when compared to the Hindus. What was it? It was the introduction of the system of the weightage for the minority representation. It implied minorities were to be given more representation than the share of their population. But what happened in the Nehru report? Nehru report totally rejected it. Nehru report said that ki, we will not give separate electorate. We will give reservation for Muslims where they were minority. But again, reservation would be given for Hindus where they were minority. On this context, we can easily decipher that. 24, the option would be that one offered Muslim more representation than the proportion of the population while the other did not. So option A would be your right option. Next, which of the following is the part of the Indian constitution? Now, this is a very simple straight-ended question. 
direct question from Lakshmikan. If you're looking into the Lakshmikan polity, then you can easily decipher this question that all these things are the part of the Indian constitution. There is nothing to explain in this question. What was the common to Catherine Mayo, Adlas Huxley, Charles Andrew and William Digby? Now this four options are all confusing option. But what most did was that they thought that it was Charles Andrew was friend to Mahatma Gandhi. So basically they said that they were, they were all friends to Mahatma Gandhi. But what actually happened was that we cannot say they were actually friends to Mahatma Gandhi. Nor we can say that they were the supporters of the Indian national movement. What happened was that basically if you look at Catherine Mayo, Catherine Mayo, what she did was that in her book, Mother India, she basically criticized Indian religion about the Indian society and everything. And on that point, Mahatma Gandhi even criticized Catherine Mayo's book and said that ki, though her book was partially right, but her book was partially wrong. So with this, option C was eliminated. Now look, they wrote commentaries on the condition of the Indian during the British rule. Now this is one of the most viable options because both Catherine Mayo Adels Huxley, Charles Andrew and William Digby, they did write commentaries on the condition of the Indian during the British rule. But Charles Andrew was the one who also supported for the India's freedom movement. See, this would be the proper explanation of it. Next, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan was opposed to the Muslim joining the Congress because he feared that this would attract the retaliation from the British. Yes, this is a very right option. That's the very reason why Sir Saeed Ahmad Khan asked Muslims not to join the Indian National Congress when it was formed. He suspected that Congress would be dominated by Hindus. Yes, that was one of his suspect. He did not like the idea of opposing the British. Yes, because he, he, come, he totally he constituted the Royal Muhammadians of India so as to support the British government and that he was a separatist. See, the last option was always a dicey option and there was a different that whether one should go for C or D. See, though he did not come directly, Sir Syed Ahmad Khan, but he was also one of the founder of the two nation theory. So in this context, I would say option D would be your right option. Rather than option C. This would be the option D and not option C. This would be option D. Next, which of the regional political parties was first able to form a government in one of the states of India? The answer is simple. It's the DMK, that is the Dravida Munitra Khasagam. Fill in the blanks. Das is an excavated site in Odisha which yielded the facets, hose, chisel, pounder, mace heads and grinding stone. Nothing to be explained in this question, but it's a direct question and it was the Golabai Sasana. This is the Golabai Sasana from where all these chisels and that the artifacts were basically found. Next, match the name of the column of the foreign travelers who came to India with the approximate time. See, from this, I, from everything, one thing that you can easily guess is that he, Fahen, Fahen came during the time of the Chandragupta II period, that is during the Yodha Gupta era. Next, with this, I would say that option B will be the right option. This is a direct question. We do not, there is nothing to be explained about this. But we need to remember the timeline so as to match the right and correct option. Which of the following issue is not taken into account while discussing the concept of the sea floor spreading? See, sea floor spreading is simple thing is that the floor of the sea, be it in the Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, that is diverging. This is the thing that there is the mid oceanic ridges which are moving apart it is because of the because of the substratum that is moving in the opposite direction now sea floor spreading it says that the sea floor is continuously being spread and that the new sea floor is being developed with this what are the evidences that are actually related with the sea floor spreading number 1 volcanic activities along the mid oceanic ridge yes it's a right option number 2 distribution of the fossil in different continents now that is a wrong option because the Oceanic ridge or the ocean floor is an active floor and it is a recent floor. Fossil fuel, fossils are though are found, but they are it's very difficult to decipher the age. See, stripes of normal and reverse magnetic field observed in the rocks of the ocean, yes. And last but not the age of the rock from the ocean floor, right? As from the mid-oceanic ridge, when we go 
towards the continent, what happens is that the rock age become older. Rocks near to the mid-oceanic ridges are more younger when compared to the rocks which are far away from the mid-oceanic ridge. So with this, the option would be option B. Next, the stream, the streams which do not follow the regional slope and drain across the geological structure. See, consequent, subsequent, resequent, and insequent. The answer is simple. The, it is the insequent stream. Insequent stream do not flow along with the slope. It flows away from the slope in any other strata. Simple question. No need for explanation. Next, according to the Weber's, the most important factor of the location of a factory. See, Weber's is not the first time it has been asked. It has been asked previously. So basically, we need to know this theory if we want to answer this question. Weber said that for an industry to be located, we need your raw material. Again, transportation, labor, last but not the least is agglomeration. Agglomeration means when industry settle up together. Industries, when they are settling up together, this is leading to agglomeration. This is your agglomeration. So from this point, he said that which was the most important point. See, the important was the transportation cost. Transportation cost will determine from where will you get the labor from and to where will you send your finished product to, to the market and from where we are going to get the raw material from. So from this, he said that the transportation cost remains a major cost for any industrial setup to be done. Which of the followers so match the following and choose the quotes? Barchans, meander, saddle and stack. You see, Barchans, I would simply say Barchans is with the Aeolian topography. Next, meander is with your fluvial topography. And last and not the least is the saddle. Let me explain to you because the saddle is something not given over here. See, if this is your alpine topography, the saddle is basically a depression over here. Last but not least, it's your stack. Stack and stumps are basically during your. This is the, it's basically during your coastal cycle that the stacks or stumps are more prevalent. That is the erosion. That is the erosional features of the uh, erosional features created by the ocean water. Now, the population distribution of the rural and the urban areas can be shown by see, hydrograph, aerograph, dot and spear, line graph. The simple answer is this. It is dots and spears. Simple question. You know the answer. Attempt it. You do not know the answer. Do not attempt it. It's basically, sir, what happens is that this, again, this question is based on the analysis. Whenever the diagrams are being produced, are you analyzing the map within the diagrams, within the subject or not? And that is the reason how we make out this. Match the following lakes with the place of the states. Chilika, obviously, it's our Odisha. Dipur Bail, I'd go for Assam. Loktak, Manipur, Kanwar Lake, Bihar. And the right option is option C. Straightforward, factual-based question, no need for analysis. In which of the following demographic transition, the highest population growth rate is observed? Now understand this. The demographic transition model, the first stage, second stage, and the third stage. What happens in the first stage is that there is high birth as well as the high death rate. Right? But as it enters the second phase, what happens is that the death falls, but birth remains constant. Hence, this is the stage in which the population will remain high. So the answer would be none other than your option B. Which of the following countries is the largest rice producing nation in the world? Straight and simple answer is China. Nothing to be explained about it. Match the following mountain peaks with the range in which they are located in the peaks. Doda Beta Peak, Dhupgar Peak, Guru Shikhar, Anaimudi Peak. Now with respect to Doda Beta, I'll go for the Nilgiris. With respect to Dhupgar Peak, I'll go for the Satpura, Guru Shikhar, Aravali. Those are matching. Anai Modi, I'll go with the Western Ghats. This is the explanation. And now it was the it was direct question. I don't believe that there is any explanation needed with respect to this question. Next, which of the following tribes is not found in the Madhya Pradesh? See, this is a simple question and a simple answer. All the above three except the Jarvas. The Jarvas are nothing but the PVTGs that are found in the Andaman and the Nicobar Island. These are the Jarvas. With respect to that, PVTGs. The num maximum number of the PVTGs we find none other than but in Odisha. Next question. 
Which of the following languages is not included in the 8th schedule of the Indian constitution? Again, a basic, basic question of the Indian polity. Analyze the 8th schedule and you can say that the Bhojpuri does not belong to the 8th schedule of the Indian constitution. Question number 42. Again, match the following. First option is the Gran Chaco. We can easily say that the Gran Chaco belongs to the Argentina, Paraguay and Bolivia. With number 1 option itself, Without wasting much of the time, you can easily decipher that it's option number D is the right option. Now, this is the basic question of the NCRT available in every NCRT 8th, 9th and 10th. Which among the following is the highest peak of the Appalachian mountain? Again, it's option A, Mount Michel. Verkoyansk, the lowest temperature recording station in Siberia is situated in which of the following basin? Again, it's option C, that is the Yana Basin. Again, the question is very factual, but again, it's very difficult to decipher that this particular mountain is located at this particular thing. Basically, if you don't know the question, you should not answer these questions because it's sometimes difficult even to get in the basic NCRT book. Similarly, Weber location model, again, it will be difficult to get in the basic NCRT books until unless you're reading the very old NCRT books and that the Weber location model has been deciphered. Next, with respect to match the following, Mars is always the red planet. Venus is a wild planet, wild planet means it's hidden given the condition that Venus, there are clouds that surrounds the Venus. Next, Saturn, ring planet, Uranus, green planet. Why green planet? Methane content. So it's option D. Next, which of the following statements are not correct with respect to the public accounts committee of the parliament? See, one of the important committee of the parliament, one of the important committees in the parliament is your public accounts committee whose member comes from the opposition. Now, number one, it says that the committee was first mentioned in the Morley Mentor reform. I would say this is a very wrong option and that it came in 1919 after uh, with the Montag Chem Spot reform. Number two, the committee is constituted under the rule 308 of the rules of procedure of the conduct of business. So I do not know whether option two is right or wrong, but I know that option one is wrong. With option one being wrong, I will again be easily eliminating which options option B and option C will be eliminated from that. Now this committee is constituted every three years every two years sorry and it restricts any ministers from being elected as a member of it all i know is that the option four is also a right option so hence with this option b is that the public accounts committee was introduced in 1921 with the first mentioned in the government of india act 1919 and also called the montford reform examine the annual audit report of the cag which the president lays before the parliament and those three reports of the CAG includes the audit report of the appropriation account, that is the expenditure part, finance account incoming part and the public undertaking. Which of the following features of the Indian constitution are not borrowed from the South African constitution? See, important over here. Basically, again, this thing, nothing to understand, but basic from the your Indian polity book. Number four is that center appoints the governor of the state. When center is appointing the governor of the state, sorry. sorry, when the center is appointing the governor of the state, it's basically from the Canadian constitution. Sorry, we just skipped the. Okay, this was the question. See. Center appoints the governor of the states. This belongs to the Canadian constitution. Concept of the procedure established by the law is of the Japanese constitution. So 48, the answer would be 1 and 2. The concept of the procedure established by the law by the Japanese constitution and the center appoints the governor of the states of the Canadian constitution. 49, in respect of the Rajya Sabha, which of the following statement is are correct? Like Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha is also subjected to dissolution. See, Rajya Sabha is a permanent house that goes, keeps on going and it is not subjected to dissolution. So option one is a wrong option. Number two, Rajya Sabha has equal footing in legislation with that of the Lok Sabha. Very wrong. Rajya Sabha has no power with respect to the money bill. Everyone knows with that. And number three, the Vice President of India is elected by members of the Legislative Assembly of the states and UTs. So with this, I can decipher that question, that point number one. 2 and 3 are all wrong statements. So the only right statement is that point number 4. 
the nominated member of the Rajya Sabha are part of the electoral college for the election of your vice president of India. Which of the following statement is are correct with respect to the impeachment of the Indian president? Number one, president of India is to be impeached for the violation of the constitution. Yes, this is a very right statement. Charges against the president shall be preferred by the Lok Sabha only. Again, here you need to analyze that the statement is given only. And when it is only, it's always a wrong statement. Look into question number three. Rajya Sabha only shall investigate the charges. Again, a wrong statement. Next, there is no provision of impeachment of the president in the Indian constitution. The only right answer would be answer C. These are very easy questions. Next. Consider the following statement with respect to the collegium system in India. It is a system appointed of the transfer of the judges. Yes, this is the right statement. Collegium basically is nothing but the group of judges who basically control the transfer of the judges and the posting. Number two, the Supreme Court Collegium is, is comprising of the Chief Justice of India and eight other senior more judges. Sorry, that was option number three. Option number two says that the system has come through the act of the parliament. Now, if we have read the polity book properly, we know that the legislation that the collegium has no legislative backing. It has only the judicial backing. So option number two is a wrong option. So with option number two being the wrong option, we can easily eliminate option number B. Third, the Supreme Court Collegium is comprising of the Chief Justice of India and eight other senior most judges. Again, it's a wrong option. It includes the five members, which includes Chief Justice and four other judges. So option C, option three is again a wrong statement. So with this, we got that option two and option three are wrong statement. So with that, I'm eliminating option B, option C and option D. Hence, the right answer is your option A. Which of the following statement is our correct? Part 10 of the Indian Constitution, remember that it's saying part 10 of the Indian Constitution deals with the scheduled and tribal areas. Yes, it is right. Part 10 is dealing with the scheduled and tribal areas. The part contains Article 220 to Article 224. No, it consists 244 and 244A. So option 1 is right, option 2 is wrong. The part deals with the formation of autonomous state comprising of certain tribal areas in Assam. We may know this, we may not know this, but look into the option number 4. Assam comes under the fifth schedule of the Indian constitution. This is a complete false statement. So option number four being wrong, we can easily eliminate B and C. B and C are being easily eliminated. We got one is right and look into this. The, this part deals with the formation of the autonomous state comprising of the certain tribal areas in Assam. With respect to this, what we can see is that key. option D is the right answer because there is no autonomous state. It calls, it, call, it calls for the formation of the autonomous tribal regions of the nation or within the state. Which of the following statement is are correct with respect to the National Institution for Transforming India? It is nothing but your Niti Ayo. The first state that it serves as the apex policy think tank. See, this is the wrong state. Uh, this is a very right statement that Niti Aayog was basically formed as a think tank that is to provide government with the necessary advices. Number two, its predecessor adopted the bottom up approach. So the predecessor of the Niti Aayog was your planning up commission and the planning commission had never a bottom up approach. It had that key one shoe fits all approach means one policy for every state. And that number two was the wrong statement. Number three, its parent ministry is the Ministry of Planning. Again, it's the right statement. And number four, it strives to promote the cooperative federalism. So one, three and four are the right statement. Hence, the answer would be your none other than your option C. Which of the following taxes are levied and collected by union but assigned to the state? See, corporation tax is a direct tax, which is directly collected by the central government. So we can easily eliminate option one. Number two, excise duty on the tobacco. We do not know. Duties in respect to the succession of property other than the agricultural property. Last but not the least is your stamp duties on bills of exchange. See, stamp duties, everybody knows that key, is provided by the central government and it is given to the state government. The state government collects it and it divides between the center and the state. And the option would be the option B. Stamp duties, as mentioned in the union list, shall be levied by the government but collected and appropriated by the state. Consider the following statement. The fundamental duties are defined as the moral obligation of all citizens are not to be enforceable through the courts 
are added to the constitution through the 44th amendment act and the 11th see the question is that the 11th fundamental duty was added to the part 4a of the constitution by the 42nd amendment now see in this entire this question the options have not been given and this is the wrong options that has been given hence will be eliminating uh, this question would not be counted in the marks and that people will be getting the grace marks for this consider the following statement in the constitution of india bankruptcy and insolvency code are in the union list trust and trustees are in the state list social security is in the concurrent list and capitalization of the tax is in the state list see with respect to this we need to know which is in which list this is a highly factual data this is a highly factual question only and only if you are knowing about it then only we can going to attempt this question all i know is that ki bankruptcy is not in the union list rather it's in your concurrent list see bankruptcy and insolvency remains in your concurrent list trust and trustees are also in the concurrent list hence the option would be 3 and 4 and because 1 and 2 are your wrong options consider the following statement in respect of the welfare state a welfare state is one in which see very important promotes the political well being of its citizen promotes social well being of its electorate see social well being of its electorate this is something we need to analyze not just electorate but also for the other people those who are not the electorate it also provides social well being for the animals it also pro because if you see that the gandhian uh, that the gandhian policies or the gandhian principles included in the dpsp it says that we need to take care of the calf and milch animals so obviously i would say that he protects social well being of its electorate is a wrong statement it protects everyone it based on the principle of equal opportunity okay fourth is that promotes equal distribution of the wealth now which of this is correct i would go for option c that is 3 and 4 c 3 and 4 are the direct statements with respect respect to option number 2 option number 2 is a very wrong statement but again option number 1 when it says that the promotes political well being of its citizen again it's a wrong statement it does not a social political well being it's quite vague it's not proper in it that it's promoting the political well being of its citizen means giving them the right to vote this that and all it's basically right to vote becomes a constitutional right and welfare state does not means that protecting the political rights of the people question number 58 consider the following statement in respect of the fundamental rights during the time of emergencies please analyze this question when i'm saying emergency it means national emergency and not financial emergency or the presidential emergency the enforcement of all fundamental rights may be suspended number 1 there is provision for moving to the court for the enforcement of the fundamental rights number 3 right to protection in respect of conviction offenses cannot be suspended right to protection of life and personal cannot be suspended which of the following statement is correct see right to protection of life and personal property can not be suspended option number 4 and look into option number 3 right to protection in respect of conviction offenses cannot be suspended see option number 3 can easily be suspended so when i am eliminating option number 3 i am eliminating both option number a and option number d then comes to the time is that ki i have option number b and c option number b we have the option number 1 that is the enforcement of all fundamental rights may be suspended yes enforcement of all the fundamental rights may be suspended there is provision for moving to the court for the enforcement of the fundamental rights see not all fundamental rights but except for fundamental rights under say, under your article 20 and 21 so the right option would be your d but we'll go for the question number 59 which of the following statement is are not correct with respect to the adjournment motion in the lok sabha okay number 1 its objective is to draw the attention of the house to the recent matter of urgent public importance yes this is one of the right statement with respect to the adjournment motion look into number 2 it requires proper and 7 days prior notice to be given to the chair so 7 days notice is not given to the chair because it says that number 1 said that ki to a recent matter and urgent of the public importance for such urgent matters if 7 days notice is given so obviously option number 2 is our required option that is it is a wrong option and option number 1 is a right option hence we can easily eliminate option number b next option number 3 it will not interrupt the normal business of the house 
this is again the required wrong option that we need because yes it will hamper the normal process normal proceedings of the house so with this two you easily got that option number two and option number three are the required not correct options look into option number four and look into option number five option number four says that it pinpoints the failure of the government in performance of its duty in accordance with the constitution and law now see i do not know about this but please look into option number five it says that it is mandatory on the part of the chair to permit it it simply means that it is mandatory for the speaker of the house to permit it remember that adjournment motion is moved only in the lok sabha and not in the rajya sabha option number five says that ki speaker has no discretion with respect to the adjournment motion this is a highly wrong statement so with this i would say that option two option three and option five are the right statement hence my statement is option number d sorry consider the following statement in respect of the anti defection law in india see anti defection law basically was introduced so as to prevent the defection that is change uh, that is change from one uh, political party to another though change is allowed but when the change happened due to the money and muscle power and for the power of position this anti defection law was introduced number 1 it says that political parties got constitutional recognition by the 52nd constitutional amendment act maybe may not be we do not know look into number 2 anti defection law came into effect on march 18th the decision of the speaker in disqualifying a elected member is subjected to judicial review since this is asking about which is the correct statement sorry we have just missed see see the, number 2 it says that the anti defection law came into effect on march 18th 1985 number 3 it says decision of the speaker in disqualifying an elected member is subjected to judicial review this is the right option that the speaker's judgment with respect to whether a particular person is to be disqualified or not is not final and it is subject to dis and it is subjected to judicial review that is the review of the supreme court hence option 3 is the right option with this we can say that ki we have three options and then we can easily eliminate option d and next anti defection law comes in action if there is split in the political party see this cannot happen if a politic simple splitting of the political party will not lead to the anti defection law anti defection law has its specific course when it will be implemented one of the is that ki if the nominated member if uh, if a if a member who has been nominated by the president joins any political party after 6 months he is subjected to disqualification so disqualification has certain norms it's not that ki a political party if there is a split of within the political party that will lead to anti defection so option 4 is a very wrong option so we can easily eliminate and we can see that ki option c is the right option consider the following statement in respect of the panchayati raj institutions in india every panchayati raj has right to receive grant in aid from the state fund on recommendation by the niti ayog this is very very wrong question it was on the recommendation of the finance commission so this question says that ki we need to find out the correct statement so first i would say that ki option 1 is the wrong uh, this is the wrong option the assigned share of revenues are one which is collected by the state government but share and transfer to the local bodies right option option number 3 state finance commission recommends the transfer of the financial resources from the central state this is a very very logical statement and that we can easily say that this is a wrong statement because it's the central financial commission and not the state financial commission so i would again say option c option 3 is the wrong statement so it's asking that which is the correct statement so i'm easily eliminating option d and then i'm eliminating option with having the option 1 so with this i got that key. option 4 is the right statement now i look i need to look between option that i need to look between option 2 and option 3 option 3 over here is also there so it's a wrong statement so the answer is obviously option a next consider the following statement with respect to the ashok mehta committee on the panchayati raj system in india this committee recommended the following replacement of the three tier system by the two tier system yes ashok mehta committee did recommend this number 2 setting up peace committees in each district to resolve non secular issues 
Now, this is a quite beyond uh, our knowledge. Number three, supremacy of the elected bodies through devolution of the power. This is a basic general statement that Panchayati Raj can only be successful only if there is devolution of power. Devolution of power means the power from the state government is given to the local bodies. Option 1 and 3 are right. With that, I can say that ki option D is the right statement because here only two options are given. Rather looking into all the options, I will simply go for option D. Next fourth is that non-participation of politicians in Panchayat election. This is, this is quite a vague, 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 very vague statement. So option D is our right option. Next 63 question, consider the following statement with respect to the pressure groups. See, pressure groups can be anything. It can be NGO, it can be activist groups. Uh, now number one option says that can influence the government regarding their particular interest. Yes, they can influence the government. The policies pursued by this group will provide common benefit to the society. They may provide, they may not provide. Common benefit to the society is a generalized statement, means it will provide benefit to all. Pressure groups, demand of the pressure groups might provide common benefit, might not provide common benefit. So hence, it's not easy to say that option number two is the right option. Number three, in order to influence the government, they require number of members. See, not necessary that they require a more number of members, 200, 500 members only they can influence the government. Again, option three is a vague statement. Number four. State-centered theory assumed that this group does not have enough popular support. Now, this is a very dicey statement and that I do not know anything about it. But from this, I can generalize that option 2 and option 3 are the wrong statement because these are general statements. That is a universal statement. For example, see, we have a pressure group which supports that, uh, uh, which, uh, which uh, actually is, uh, it said that, ki, that uh, leaker, uh, leaker should be banned. See, when the liquor is being banned, some might be benefited, some might be losing because those who are selling liquor, they will be losing obviously. But while the other thing is that the those uh, means uh, some uh, this women uh, members will be benefited since their men will not be consuming liquor. Simple understanding. So not all members of the society are being benefited. So I'm easily all eliminating option number two and I'm easily eliminating option number three. And then my option would be none other than your option D. Consider the following statement with respect to the game theory of the policy evaluation. See, game theory of the policy evaluation, um, game theory has come multiple number of times. It is also represented in one of the movies, The Beautiful Mind, in which John Nash had actually developed the game theory. Though he was not the inventor of the game theory, but John Nash had actually developed the game theory. And game theory basically says that if three to four persons are there and their target is to get a particular thing done, or their target is a particular for let's change this let us say that ki africa has huge number of lithium ore now india is in competition with china and it is competition with australia to get lithium ore because lithium will be powering your electric vehicles now in this context what, hap what happens is that one would be competing with other hence one would be di one would what what will happen is that ki china will reduce india's chances of getting lithium Similar, India might reduce Australia's chances of getting lithium because they will be focusing upon one. So they say that ki instead of focusing on Africa, you can also move on to the other nations which is having significant lithium reserves, other African nations. So in that way, it's cutting the competition. Now, if you understood this thing, now let us see if we can solve this. Number one says that basic concept of the game theory models are players in the game can be people. Yes, they can be people. They can be government. Right now, I've given the example of China, India and Australia competing for lithium. Number two, strategies are selected by players without anticipating the move of the other player. See, that is something not in the game theory. Number three, so option two is a wrong option. So with the elimination of the option two, I can easily say that option A is the right option. Again, this question is difficult. This is not an easy question to be answered because people might come, might not come across this game theory. And this is not anywhere in the basic NCRTA books. Consider the following statement with respect to the incremental model of policy formulation. Again, this incremental model of the policy formulation is such a question that you should not attend it. This is not a question to be attended. At no point, I'm also going to give an explanation of this question because the moment I give the explanation of this question, most people will delve into to find books that has knowledge of this question. But this question had simply meaning that we are not here to attend this question. If you know about this question, attend it. If you do not know about this question, do not attend it. But do not go searching for this information in books 
because ultimately you will end up in doing a research rather than preparing for a competitive exam. Next, the sex ratio as per the NFH is 5. This is a simple straightforward question. It is C929. Where was the concept of the sustainable development explained for the first time? It was in the Brundtland Commission report where it says that the sustainable development means that we need to use the resource in such a way that we will be saving the resource for our future. That is the simple meaning of the sustainable development. If you understood this meaning, what I said, you will be also able to answer other similar questions of sustainable development that were asked in this paper. Now, the first regular census in India was conducted in the year 1881. It was by during the time of Lord Ripon. It's a very easy question. Now, uh, one thing we need to know, extra added information, the decennial census or the de census that is taken place after every 10 years is conducted by the Office of the Register General under the Ministry of the Home Affairs. According to the Niti Aayog 2020 index, based on the performance across 16 sustainable development goals, which Indian state occupies the bottom most position? See, it was Bihar which occupied the bottom most position. Despite of Bihar has certain considerable development, but it consistently started to occupy the bottommost position. With reference to the United Nations SDG goals, which of the following is goal 10? It's option A, reducing inequalities. Most of the students got confused between reducing inequalities and zero hunger. But the answer is reducing inequalities. The concept of sustainable development goal is related to option B, conservation of resources as given by the Brutland Commission report. Who gave the call for the Evergreen Revolution? Simple question, MS Swaminathan. Which state in India has been declared as the first organic farming state? Again, simple question, simple answer, it's Sikkim. The base year of the wholesale price index, again, it shifted from 20, that is, it, uh, that it has shifted to 2011 to 2012. Which of the following items do not come under the GST law? See, agriculture produce, petroleum products, gems and jewelries and handicrafts. See, people got confused between A and B. The actual answer is that key B, because agriculture produce is zero rated under the GST, but petroleum products comes under the VAT, that is your value added tax. This is the understanding. So agriculture produce is zero rated under GST. That does not mean that they are not included in the GST, they are included in the GST, but GST on them is zero. But on petroleum products, it is not under GST, it is under the VAT regime till today. 76. Out of the four concepts of the money supply, M1, M2, M3, M4, the post office savings are included. Obviously, a simple answer, M2 and M4. This is the explanation that I have given up. Very easy. M2, look into the M2. M2 contains M1 plus saving deposits of the post office. Look into the M3. It Again, it contains M1 plus net time deposit of the commercial bank. And next, look into the M4. M3 plus total deposits within the post office of sharing. Which of the Indian plans accepted the strategy of inclusive growth for the first time? See, inclusive growth first time started with the 11th five-year plan. Why? The, improved, the 11th five-year plan basically focused on the social development and that the development should be with the bottom-up approach. And that is what we call it as the inclusive development. As per the World Economic Forum Global Gender Gap Report 2022, India ranks out of 146 countries, 135. It's a simple, straightforward question. You know the answer, answer it. You do not know, leave it. As per the Multidimensional Poverty Index, which released by Niti Aayog in November, which state has the least multidimensionally poor in India? Again, it's B, Kerala. This is the figure that we have given. It basically included three weights, health, education and standard of living. And Kerala has the least number of persons who are in the multidimensional poverty index. As you can see, it is 0 0.7 for Kerala. We have the question number 80. For which of the following age group the unique identification authority of India has issued? See, simple answer for children up to the age of 5 years. Simple answer, simple question, straightforward, nothing to be explained. See, this is the Bal Aadhaar. Next, come to the question number 81. On the ozone layer, on the ozone layer, the CFC has continued their effects as, see, CFC basically is the nothing but your chlorofluorocarbon. The chlorofluorocarbon acts as a catalyst upon which the chlorine ions helps in reducing the ozone. The reaction used 
uh, the reactions use up the chlorine atoms formed by them leading to the degradation of ozone okay see look into the question option number a and look into option number c option number c says in reaction the chlorine atoms formed by them serve as the catalyst leading to the degradation of the ozone now this is the actual best answer that we are looking for and this would be the right answer hence option c would be the right answer with respect to this question identify the incorrect statement eutrophication is a natural process seen in the fresh water bodies greenhouse effect occurs naturally yes greenhouse effects occurs naturally that is the capacity that is the atmosphere of the earth traps the that the atmosphere of the earth it's trapping up the radiation in the upper atmosphere in the upper part of the atmosphere ozone causes harm to the animals yes in the upper part of the atmosphere obviously i would say in the stratosphere if we are directly there's the place where the ozone can cause harm to the animals d in the tropical area most of the forest have been lost yes it's right in the tropical area most of the forest have been lost that is the region between the 0 to 8 degree north and south of the equator so obviously the incorrect statement is none other than your option number a oh sorry we just shifted to other the question see so option number a is your incorrect now name of the countries which have announced the change in their capital due to the sea level rise see it's the indonesia what happened in indonesia is that indonesia has basically announced nusantara as the new capital because jakarta its previous capital is sinking the very reason for its sink is that the climate change and the rise of the mean sea level which has actually caused flooding of jakarta and in the coming year jakarta might be submerged in the ocean Indian crocodile conservation project was started in option B that is 1975 straightforward question you know the answer write it you do not know leave it according to the latest report which of the world uh, most polluted cities this was the Bhivadi of Rajasthan is the most polluted city in India because of the industrial developments international day for the conservation of the mangrove again this question the right option is July 26 but as you can see OPAC there has been a typological error in which it has actually not given the option if you have attended it you will be getting grace mark but all I know that OPAC will not be counting this question consider the following statement that this is an important question see with respect to the Indian coal now in India remember that the majority of the Indian coal is nothing but your bituminous type of the coal and the bituminous type of the coals they have the presence of the heavy element lead mercury arsenic number two coal fired power plants see look, look in the first option coal ash contains arsenic lead and mercury obviously bituminous coal having this heavy elements number two coal fired power plants release sulfur dioxide oxides of nitrogen yes number three high ash content is observed in indian coal yes the indian coal calorific value is low and the ash content is high that's the very reason that india has to depend upon the anthracite coal import from australia so all these three options are right next question number 88 which of the following are the key features of the NGRBA? Now, please, with respect to this question, this is a direct pickup from the 2016 UPAC prelims question. Again, a message by OPAC that we were shifting to UPAC. River basin is the unit of planning of the management. It spearheads the river conservation efforts at the national level. Look into the question number one and number two option. Sorry. Look into option number one and number two. Option number one and number two are very basic options. And look into option number three. One of the CM of the state through which the Ganga flows becomes the chairman of the NGRBA on rotational basis. Now, option number three is a wrong option and hence because the chairman is basically the PM. So, option number A is the right option. Now, the NGRBA, it has been subsumed into the National Ganga Council in 2016. In terms of efficiency, the most potent greenhouse gas is obviously CFC, it has the most potent greenhouse gas. According to the Shelford's law of tolerance, now Shelford's law of tolerance is something that we are not going to get in the basic NCRT or neither was it in the current affairs. Now this question, if you can understand this question, then write it. If you do not understand it, then leave it. But I will tell you the technique how to understand this. According to the Shelford's law of tolerance, the organism, organism's wide environmental factor tolerance limit shows. See. 
from the question itself the answer is already given in the question the organism's wide environmental factor tolerance limit shows narrow distribution with low population the question says the end, the particular organism has a wide range of adaptation so option a i cannot say but look into option b wide distribution with high population size again option c narrow distribution with high population size and again option d wide distribution with low population size a, a particular a particular organism which can adopt in any kind of environment which has a wide range of adaptation will obviously have a wide distribution and high population size so even if even if i am not knowing the subject but by general interpretation i can say that option b is your right option next inflammatory bowel diseases are basically in option a that is your intestine the bowel disease is basically related to your stomach diseases and all number 2 beyond visual line of sight is an experiment associated with which of the following see naval unmanned aerial vehicle submarine anti tank missile see the answer is simple unmanned aerial vehicles but why has it asked the question see recently what happened in this ukraine and russia war consistently russia has been using the unmanned aerial vehicles to attack ukraine similarly ukraine has also been using that so the new form of the warfare that has developed is the warfare through the uavs so the ministry of the civil aviation has already looked into it and it has already started its program to develop uavs that is unmanned aerial vehicles which are beyond the range means you cannot see them but you can operate them at a very greater distance that is called the beyond the range visible range and example of it is the shahed 136 it has consistently been used by russia in ukraine in ethylene which of the following shape is acquired by the molecule now see this is a very complicated question and the answer is coplanet triangular see in this kind of a question if you are that into chemistry you attend it because if you are not into that chemistry then do not attend it but i am quite sure that this question was basically a googly question and you do not need to go into the core economics to know about this but the answer will be c 94 question name the new tools that is aimed at matching the potential volunteer to the new clinical trial it says that ki potential volunteer means those volunteer who want to join the clinical trial for development of the covid related vaccines and other medicines for the covid it's simple that sorry it's option d world without the covid is the new platform the world's first floating nuclear power plant obviously it's russia who has developed it this is the russian plant 96 which of the following causes causes is responsible for the production of the radio carbon in atmosphere radio carbon please understand this radio carbon is nothing but your c14 c14 is produced in the atmosphere on the action of when there is a collision between the fast neutrons and nitrogen nuclei present in the atmosphere this is the very reason when your radio carbon is produced so radio carbon is nothing but your c14 produced in the stratosphere by the nuclear reaction nuclear reaction of the atmospheric nitrogen with your with your thermal neutrons produced naturally by your cosmic rays right and one more thing is that again radioactive carbon is produced when nuclear weapon testing is done nuclear weapon testing radiation uh, that the uh, generates a whole lot of radiation which results in the formation of the radio carbon next what was the active medium used for in the first working laser ever constructed now again this question is something that we have never thought of and this question was something that we should have left but mostly what students did was that they easily went for this helium neon gas but actually not the answer was ruby rod was actually used it was the ruby rod which was actually used for the construction of the first working laser ever constructed so the answer would have been the option c next unicorn the unicorn is the recent uh, basically is the name of which space body that was recently discovered at 1500 light years away from the earth it's basically a black hole now what is the thing is that this particular black hole it's first thing is that ki this is one of the smallest black hole 
This is the smallest black hole and also the most closest to our solar system. Understand this. It is the smallest black hole, but it is also closer to our solar system. And it might be, but scientists are still very much confused and they are still researching. But they say it may be. But it is basically a black hole. What is the uh, Patania 2 which was seen recently in news? See, Patania 2 was nothing but your mining rib. It is it's your, oh, sorry, it is your mining robot. Now, the Patania 2 mining robot would basically be used for the mining of the manganese nodules. Now, as you know that manganese nodules are available at the ocean bed. And the manganese nodules are the source for the iron, gold, cobalt, nickel. And that, that if we can harness this manganese nodule, then we could potentially gain much of the minerals that we are gaining on the land from the ocean beds. It's a, it's a 35 ton tracked subsea vehicle. So basically, it's, it will be used for the mining of your manganese nodules. Which company has acquired the signal rival messaging application Wicker? See, Wicker is basically a messaging application which has a higher level of encryption. Recently, it was none other than your Amazon which has basically adopted your Wicker because, because of its strong encryption. Now, with this, we have come with the, to the end of the end of the test, with the end of the discussion of the prelims test series. With the end of the discussion of the prelims paper, Basically, we need to now to talk about the cutoff. See, if I say the paper was not easy, the paper was made extremely difficult by adding factual data. But still then, the paper was mark fetching. But if you ask me about the cutoff, the cutoff for this time will be low than the previous years. For the general, I would say it will go around 80s. For the general, unreserved male, it will go around 80s. And for the female persons, they will come around 75 and below that others. So basically, the cutoff will not be high given that the number of posts given is more and that the question level is difficult when compared to the previous year's question level. So with this, I would like to end my session. Thank you for viewing our video. Good luck for the coming mains examination. Goodbye.